bills on Speaker Pelosi's desk. I yield the floor. Mr. President. Majority Leader. I had planned uh, to discuss the corrosive political games that the Speaker of the House continues to play with the solemn issue of presidential impeachment. But the deadly serious events of yesterday evening threw those political squabbles into the starkest possible relief. I was troubled but not surprised by reports that Iran fired ballistic missiles at U.S. forces in Iraq last night. <clears throat> As I've warned, the threat posed by Iraq has been growing for years, and this threat will continue even beyond the death of Tehran's master terrorist, Soleimani. We must remain vigilant in the face of serious threats posed by Tehran. Apparently, these strikes did not kill or wound Americans, but they demonstrate the significant progress Iran has made over the last decade in building a large, long-range, and accurate ballistic missile force. Many of us have long cited the absence of any constraint on Iran's sophisticated missile program as one of the primary shortcomings of the Obama-Iran deal. And this strike stands as a reminder to the world of this growing threat. We rightly talk a lot in this chamber about American interests, <clears throat> but last night was another stark reminder that Iran and its proxies have been a cancer on Iraq's sovereignty and Iraq's politics for some time. Tehran has long shown disregard for Iraqi lives. Just in the last few weeks, its militia proxies have slaughtered innocent Iraqi protesters, and it has launched ballistic missiles at its territory. The millions of Iraqis who've been taking to the streets for months to protest have understood this perfectly well. I spoke to the president last night. I'm grateful for his patience and prudence as he and his cabinet deliberate how to respond appropriately to the latest Iranian provocation. As a superpower, we have the capacity to exercise restraint and to respond at a time and place of our choosing, if need be. I believe the president wants to avoid conflict or needless loss of life, but is rightly prepared to protect American lives and interests. And I hope Iran's leaders do not miscalculate by questioning our collective will in launching further attacks. For our part, I certainly hope our own congressional delegations do not give Tehran a reason to question our national will. Top officials will provide a classified briefing to senators today. <clears throat> As I've said before, I hope all senators will wait for the facts before they pass judgment on the recent strike on Soleimani. Patience, caution, and restraint can sometimes be in short supply around here, but when matters of national security are at hand, it's imperative that we seek out the facts, restrain our partisan urges, and concentrate on protecting our country. For this reason, it's troubled me that Speaker Pelosi responded to the earliest reports yesterday by leaping to blame, quote, needless provocations by our administration. In other words, blaming the United States. So let's be clear. We can and should debate how to responsibly respond to Iranian threats, but the notion, the notion that our administration is to blame for Iranian aggression? Mr. President, that's nonsense, utter nonsense. For 40 years since the founding of the Islamic Republic, Iran has consistently pursued aggression against the United States, against Israel, against its Arab neighbors. The question before us is not who is to blame for the aggression, it is how best to deter and defend against it. Now, Mr. President, I do need to say a few words about the other serious matter occupying the Congress. Late last year, Speaker Pelosi and House Democrats sped through a slapdash impeachment of President Trump in 12 weeks because they insisted the need to undo the 26th election was urgent. Urgent, they said. 
Since then, the same people have spent three weeks dragging their heels and refusing to proceed to a Senate trial. Supposedly, the explanation for this shameless game playing is that Speaker Pelosi wanted leverage, leverage, to reach into the Senate and dictate our trial proceedings to us. Now, I've made clear from the beginning that no such leverage exists. It's non-existent. And yesterday, we made it clear it will never exist. A majority of the Senate has decided that the first phase of an impeachment trial should track closely <clears throat> with the unanimous bipartisan precedent that all 100 senators supported for the first phase of the Clinton trial back in 1999. There will be no haggling with the House over Senate procedure. We will not cede our authority to try this impeachment. The House Democrats' turn is over. The Senate has made its decision. The 1999 precedent does not guarantee witnesses or foreclose witnesses. Let me say that again. It neither guarantees witnesses nor forecloses witnesses. It leaves those determinations until later in the trial where they belong. I fully expect the parties will raise questions of witnesses at the appropriate time. And I would remind my friends on the other side, I strongly suspect that not all the potential witnesses would be people the Democrats are eager to hear from. So the Senate will address all these questions at the appropriate time. And that is for the Senate and the Senate only to decide, period. Now, even fellow Democrats are expressing public concern over the Speaker's endless appetite for these cynical games. Here's what the junior senator from Connecticut told the press yesterday. He said, I think the time has passed. She should send the articles over. And the senior senator from West Virginia said, I think it needs to start. I really do. And the junior senator from Maine said, I think it's time for the speaker to send the articles over. My Democratic friends are losing patience, just like the American people are losing patience. The country knows this absurdity should not go on. So what are the American people saying? A recent Harvard-Harris poll found that 58% of Americans believe Speaker Pelosi should send the articles to the Senate, not continue holding them up. Let me say that again. This is a Harvard poll. Found that 58% of Americans believe Speaker Pelosi should send the articles to the Senate, not continue holding them up. And in the same survey, 77% believe Democrats need to accept the same structure as the Clinton trial rather than hold out for special new rules. So we're beginning to hear from the American people how they view this standoff. We all know that senators have a diversity of opinion about President Trump, about the House inquiry, about the optimal structure for a trial. But notwithstanding all of this, no senator, no senator should want the House of Representatives to steamroll institutional norms and dictate our business to us. Haven't enough toxic new precedents been set in recent months? Hasn't the House broken enough constitutional China already? This is not about the current speaker and the current president. Do my colleagues believe this is what a future Democratic president would deserve? Do they believe it's good for the country? There is a reason the Constitution reads the way it does. The House has the sole power of impeachment. They've exercised it. But it is the Senate to whom the founders gave the sole power to try all impeachments. End of story. And yet, even as her fellow Democrats are jumping ship, the Speaker is trying to double down. Yesterday evening, in the midst of these deadly serious events, Speaker Pelosi put out yet another statement saying she has no intention to end her political game plan. At the very same time that a global crisis was unfolding in real time, 
she published yet another dear colleague letter saying she intends to keep our commander in chief in this limbo indefinitely. I'm glad Democratic senators are losing patience with us. I would urge my friend, the Democratic leader, to listen to his own members. My distinguished colleague from New York is the minority leader in the United States Senate. He is a senior member of an independent branch of our bicameral legislature. The Senate is not a creature of the House. The Democratic leader does not need to continue to be in thrall to the speaker. He does not need to keep colluding with outside efforts to supplant the judgment of his own colleagues. Stand up for the Senate. Stand up for our institutions. Stand up for the country. Now, Senator Mitch McConnell making some remarks off the top on Iran and then getting into impeachments. You are watching live here on News Now. Thank you to all the viewers that are watching from not only in this country, but from around the world. We do appreciate you watching worldwide. If you haven't already done so, now would be the perfect time to hit that subscribe button and alert your friends and family of when President